Good day mates and matettes and welcome to another Fishing for Icebergs tutorial. Today we are looking at a system to produce infinite amounts of food. Now this little system here is almost completely uh, red power based, however it does use the soul shard drop trap that we showed earlier. Now what happens here is that this is the skeleton trap which we used earlier for this arrow trap. Now before, to get the bones out of the way, we dumped them into this pit of lava using this filter. However now it has been adjusted and takes the bones across to this chest. This chest in turn pumps them into an auto crafting table which turns it into bone meal. Now the way this system works is by first placing seeds, then fertilizing them, and then breaking them with block breakers. Uh, as you can see, the block breakers take out both seeds and wheat, and then put them into this chest here. From here, the wheat is filtered out into a final chest, and the seeds are filtered back into the two deployers which send the which set them down. Now, deployers are used at the top and the back while block breakers are used at the side. Uh, deployers act as if they are right clicking with the item, so the seed deployers act as if they are right clicking on the farmland and which is just tilled soil, uh, which you get by hoeing dirt. And the uh, ones at the back act as if they're right-clicking with bone meal and this acts to fertilize. Now the setup here is specifically used for wheat with uh, this central chest being very important. However, if we go to the back here we can see that this setup is slightly different. This is the setup that you would use if you are using it to make either potatoes or carrots. As potatoes and carrots are both their own seed and product. So after the block breakers pull out the produce, it has to first be redirected past the top deployers, where it would act as a seed, before continuing on to the final chest, where it would act as a product. Now this, is in, this entire system is based on the logistics of the red power sequencer. Now the sequencer works to send a redstone pulse in one of four directions after a certain amount of time. Now the time specified here as one second is the time between each of the flicks. So when it changes from that bulb to that bulb, it takes one second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Now, the order is very important here, as if it gets out of order, the seeds will not be fertilized, or the fertilizer will be used in the wrong order, and as such, it is important to have the sequencer direct first to the top deployers for seed placement, then to the back deployers for fertilizer, and finally to the side uh, block breakers to take the produce. Now, here we have a small bit of logistics which is important for the newer versions of Minecraft. Now, in the newer versions, uh, it takes more than one bone meal to successfully grow any crops or trees. As such, this counter system is used in order to allow multiple pulses to be sent to the bone meal deployers for every single pulse that is sent from the sequencer. Now the workings of the counter is shown over here with these lights. As you can see there is a negative and a positive side to the counter. These are the pulse inputs. If we look in here, if a redstone pulse enters the side with the negative sign, then it acts with the decrement. If it is added to the positive side, 
then it acts with the increment. Now, the maximum count is the range of the counter. Whenever it is in the middle of this range, anywhere from 1 through to 6, in the case of this 7 max count, then it will allow, uh, then it will not emit a redstone pulse. However, when it is at either the top, 7, or the bottom, 0, it will emit a redstone pulse depending on the end. When it, is, when it is at its max count, it emits it from the plus side, and when it is at its minimum count, it, it acts a redstone pulse out the negative side. Now, this is important in the system, as, as you can see here, when the redstone pulse is sent into the back of the timer, the timer is shut off. Having counted the number of pulses through this side line, this allows you to control the number of pulses that the timer releases. Different numbers are shown here controlling these four lamps, as well as different timings for the, uh, for the timers. And that is how you work the infinite food machine. You have your deployers and your block breakers set up as so, and you control it through the logistics of the sequencer and the counter. Now, if you would like anything clarified from this episode, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you next time for a bit more of a tutorial. Have a good one, mates.